Hello and welcome to the latest Royal Automobile Club talk show brought to you in association with Motorsport magazine. We're at the Royal Automobile Club in Woodcote Park near Epsom today and it's my great privilege to introduce to you reigning British touring car champion Colin Turkington. Colin, welcome. Nice to have you with us. And he'll be talking to me, Simon Aaron, features editor of Motorsport, and also one of the voices of the BTCC, Alan Hyde, a man who's actually been in the pit lane at every single one of Colin's touring car races. How many have you done? Alan would probably know more than <laughs> me. I, th I think it's my, f is it my 400th is coming up at Thruxton? There's a bit of a milestone coming up. So yeah, I uh, suppose 14 or 15 yeah. years. Yeah, and, when, and and Alan's been in every one of those, so he's very well qualified to, to join us. So, Alan, you're normally on the other side of the desk doing the sound engineering. Great to have you here. Thank you very much. Right, first off, Colin, what are you doing? There's a whole lot of... You, you're a BMW ambassador. You race a BMW for West Surrey Racing in the BTCC. There's a whole lot of BMWs parked outside here. What are you actually doing today at the RAC, apart from talking to us? Primary reason really was was obviously to come and come and see you guys and well, take take part yeah. in the in the podcast. Mm. But yeah, one of my roles as as a as a BMW BMW ambassador, uh, you know, I get to attend fantastic events like this, and we're here with uh, Cooper BMW uh, at the at the RAC club, and really to give to give members of uh, of the club an opportunity to see and drive these ultimate driving machines. You know, there's an amazing array of cars here today most of which i have never yet driven uh so things like the x5 the x7 the, the new 7 series 8 series the i8 i8 roadster so an amazing selection of cars so it's a wonderful opportunity you know to to sample each, each one of those and uh, i suppose try before you buy so they haven't given you one of each as a company car yet I'm working on that. I think uh, my favourite definitely after today was was the X7. Uh, it's an an incredible car. You know, I, I like the I like the SUVs, and uh, that is pure luxury along with along with performance. But uh, I think I need to win a few more races before I'm going to get one of those. So I mean, bas basically, doubling up as a car salesman as well as a racing driver. Well, the, uh, that's the impression. But let's 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 go back to your day job. Um, I mean, how did it all start for you? Was was there, was there some sort of strong family connection with the sport back in the day, or, or was it something you discovered for yourself as a kid? Yeah, from from I was a kid, um, motorsport was was in and and through our house. Uh, my dad, uh, he rallied uh, back in Northern Ireland and raced go karts. Uh, as Alan will, will know, my my mum did some co driving for my dad. But even before that, my, my grandfather... And they, they still got married, despite that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's <laughs> they did. Yeah, yeah they, um, they never seemed to fall out. Um, <laughs> but you, but before that, my grandfather had a, had a real passion for, for motorbike racing, and uh, particularly road racing in, in Ireland, which is still uh, a, a massive, massive sport. Yeah. And so I was brought up um, at, at local bike races. My dad sponsored um, local riders. He's, he's, he sponsored some local teams. And uh, that was my motorsport education, you know, going to the Isle of Man TT, the Northwest 200. And, um, you know, just seeing the, the, the speeds and the commitment of, of, of those riders. But I was always pushed away from, from two wheels. You know, we... Being involved in the sport, we saw the dangers. We, we we saw the accidents. You know, I remember only too well going to to the Royal Victoria Hospital in Belfast to see Philip McCallum when he'd come off the bike, and it was the closest thing I'd seen to to to, to a dead man. You know, his body was was in bits, and uh, yeah, I knew straight away that that, that wasn't f for me. So um, was that was that the moment that actually? I mean, had you sort of kind of quite fancied it until then? I I, I suppose I hadn't really considered it, but. You know, as as a kid, that probably scared me, and I thought I I don't want to be I don't want to be him. You know, I don't want to be in here. So, uh, so I have two other brothers, and uh, my my older brother started uh, started racing go karts, uh, cadet go karts at at Nuts Corner in in Northern Ireland, and I naturally followed him into the sport just just as a hobby, just as a bit of fun, something to do at the weekends. How long was it before you? I mean, you you, you progressed through karts. I presume you did pretty well in cars. You did okay. I was an average carter. Um, really? Okay. Yeah, I was. F for me, um, motorsport in those early years was was just a bit of fun, and I didn't take it seriously at all. You know, I was. Um, I went out, did my racing, but I was more interested in just having a bit of play about with with the other kids, 
I, I was racing against. And I think karting uh, back back when I did it, you know, that's um, you know that's more than twenty years ago. Was uh, wasn't as serious as as I see it is now. And um, yeah, it was just something to do at the weekends with with the family. And you know, I was I think I won some. Uh, yeah, I won many races, but I wasn't a top level carter by says, any stage. He says average. Oh, and by the way, I won, <laughs> I won many races. Yeah, right. Okay. But but one interesting story. As you know, go-karts can be quite fickle and, and unreliable. Yes. And as a kid, all you want to do is go out and put some laps in, you know, keep going round and round. And what frustrated me the most was with the go-karts was on, on the Saturday, you know, practice qualifying day, the cart would be perfect. It would be singing. You would be you would be up the sharp end. You put it in the, in, in the truck, take it out the next day, and it wouldn't start, wouldn't go. And you're like, what, what's, what's <laughs> going on here? So... It got me that much that after four years of carts, I said, Dad, I can't take this anymore. This, I've, I've had enough. You know, I'm not enjoying this. So off I went to play golf. And uh, that lasted uh, all of <laughs> six weeks. <laughs> no, s s slight, slightly longer than that. Um, you know, I wanted to do something c completely different. And uh, yeah, I picked up a set of golf clubs and... And I really enjoyed it. I, I loved it. You know, obviously, it's the polar opposite. I think of um, it's cheaper of, of motorsport. Uh, it's a bit bit cheaper, but uh, you know, and, and we're blessed with some great courses uh, and clubs in in Ireland. So uh, you know, I enjoyed playing golf, but there was always, I suppose, that burning desire and, and passion for motorsport. Do you still play? Not enough. Uh, no, no I play, play a bit of crazy golf and <laughs> pitch and putt. But uh, no, I just don't, uh, like like most people say, I don't have f a spare four hours uh, to, to commit to, to a full round of golf. It is a big commitment, isn't it? It's a commitment of time. Yeah, yeah it is. And, and, and golf, I suppose, like motorsport, can be very frustrating. You need to put the hours in to, to maintain your level or else you just start going going backwards. So maybe when, uh, when, when the motorsport career dies off a bit, I'll have more time for, for, for the golf course. There's a decent golf course just out the window. If you, if you might have, have you eyed that up? Or? Yeah, there's there's two <laughs> golf courses out the window, so uh, yeah, I was eyeing that up in in the X7 earlier, just to see how it would go over that terrain, but uh, being my first visit to, to the Royal Automobile Club, I thought I'll leave that for another day. And so... Uh, what was the so how what was the mechanism for getting yourself back into racing? I think you did a bit of autograss or something, didn't you? Or autocross? Yeah, that's right. I, you know, I always I, I was lucky w where I was brought up. In that my dad was uh, he was a builder. He was um, involved in construction, and we had a massive yard at home, a massive concrete yard. So I always had access to a vehicle. Should that be a van, a forklift, or whatever? But as a kid. I loved cars and I always had cars. So we had we had minis. I had Ford Cortinas, and I would just go 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 down there and just drive around in the evenings for hours. You know, as as fast as I could. So I was always when I look back now, I was always developing my skills and my craft. And um, then I think when I was fourteen, uh, there was an auto autograss uh, club started up in in Portadown. So that was. I remember so well going to going to the scrapyard and buying buying my mini for for fifty pounds of my hard earned pocket money, <laughs> and uh, brought it to to, uh, to 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 a family friend and we we prepped the car ourselves, um, used a whole can of pop rivets and patched it back together, and I think that's when I fell in love with with motorsport again. You know, it's a short oval racing, uh, on dirt on grass and. Um, uh, it was a uh, uh, yeah 1200 cc mini and it was just fun you know it was uh, you're only using first and second gear the mucks coming in uh th through your through your mesh uh windscreen and um yeah that was sort of reignited the the passion and it also i mean a lot of people are quite sniffy about short oval racing whether it's stock cars or bangers or whatever but loose surface stuff is fantastic but honing your car control isn't it yeah, it's it, it's it's great, you know, because even on the on the dry summer days, you know, we always had a a, a bowser of water, you know, a, a a tractor and tanker that would go out and, and wet the track, you know, as soon as it got remotely dry. So, yeah, you're constantly sharpening your skills. But for me, it was all just about I needed to do something to to enjoy motorsport again. And um, you know, I have two boys now, and that's what I say to them. You know, it's we we go 
we go out on our carts but the most important thing is we have fun because the moment it gets too serious or there's too much pressure then then it's then you naturally you step away from that so uh so I, so i raced autographs for for two years loved every moment of it and um but even at that stage you know i um i come across this championship on on the tv it was what's, what's this the btcc and uh wow this 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 looks like fun you know it was um uh, saturday afternoon prime time viewing and um you know that's when uh, i started to get hooked on something else and you you made your circuit debut in ireland in a metro in a metro yeah you've yeah. got it yeah um I mean, that, I presume that was again just a, a family prep thing, and not putting something together in the backyard, was it? Or yeah, that was um, you know very very low budget, and um, the the only way I can explain the metro it was like racing a block of flats. <laughs> so uh, I'm, we did everything to try and make it fast. We we took um, the window wipers off. I only had one. Uh, one mirror on the car because obviously all these these things are are drag. We polished the car to to within an inch of its life, but again it was just cheap fun racing. And uh, you know we, we raced at Kirkiston and um, you know there's there's two long straights and a bit of a chicane either, either end, and you're just slip streaming. You know these these group of uh, of metros. And again it's looking back now it was you know. That was my first um, experience of, of one make racing, and it was really, you know, develop developing my craft and my, and my skills. But most importantly, you know, really making me enjoy motorsport. When I mean, you you did the metros for a year or two, didn't you? And then you you came over to the mainland to race fiestas. What was it? I mean, was that the kind of start in your mind of the an attempt to actually sort of get yourself get yourself noticed in the by the wider world? It it wasn't at all, but by that stage it was purely because my my brother had started at that stage racing in the UK. I went down the uh, saloon car route, and he went down the, the single seater route. So uh, my brother Gary come to to the UK to race. Uh, initially, it was Formula Formula Vauxhall Junior, and then on to on to Formula Ford. So uh, so Gary started going over to coming over to England to, to race. So naturally, uh, I followed, but. It, you know, I wasn't pursuing a career at that stage. I was still watching the BTCC, but it it wasn't on my radar that I could do that one day or I want to do that. You know, I, I followed all sorts of, of motorsports. You know, I, I loved following Colin McRae in, 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 in rallying. You know, Formula One was, was on was on our screens every Sunday. So my whole my whole life was just immersed in motorsport. But again, the, the, the Fiestas was just the next step from you know, from the Mini, the Metro, the Fiesta, you know, I was just keeping it all all simple. And, um, you know, that was a good place for me to, to go and, and learn all the tracks in the UK. And and that was the big difference because I only ever knew one circuit, Kirkuson, and, you know, very quickly you become a specialist in, in one track. And I'll never forget um, arriving to, to Brands Hatch for, for the very first time. And... Um, just driving into the venue and I was completely blown away by 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 the place you know it it was just it was something that I had never seen before you know this this amazing race circuit set down into a bowl into it was such a theater and it was just a whole new world had just immediately opened up to me so um yeah the the fiestas was um you know there's a, there's a lot of um successful uh, saloon car drivers come come through the the fiesta series actually before me i think matt neil did some fiestas and gordon shedden gordon shedden yeah so uh, again it was a very very good training ground and um you know that was one of the championships that was on the support package to to the btcc so again it was one for me it was one step closer to uh to to the British Touring Car Championship. And also, it was the first time that you were sort of on the other side of the television screen that you'd been watching at home. You you were sort of sucked into the BTCC, and then all of a sudden, you were part of the whole circus. That must have been a real eye-opener that year. The, it was very daunting for, mm. um, you know, for a, a kid from, from Northern Ireland who had never been exposed, really, to, to the wider world or, or to any sort of 
media. You know, I don't think I'd ever given an interview in my life. So uh, you know, I would I would see. Um, I think it was Hay Fisher was was uh, was was running the program, so I would see them coming and just make a beeline for for the back of the van. Yeah, so because, because so naturally you're, me. you're quite shy, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. you yeah. know, as uh, what I was, I was sixteen or seventeen then, so um, I was I was shy, you know, and I'm, you know, I still am. I think quite quite reserved and. I thought I'm not going to know what what to say, so I just try and hide and hope they go away and pick pick somebody else. So, you know, that was the start I think of my motorsport education. And nobody had trained you how to how to do an interview, what to say, what not to say. None of the the media training that so many drivers get when they're in karting nowadays. Th- these are the things that they don't teach you in yeah. in schools, and and I think. Um, you know, and now all those opportunities and, and media training are available to, to to the next generation coming through, and we all recognise the, the importance of that. But w- when I was doing it, you just, uh, you know, when I look back at some of the interviews now, I just cringe. <laughs> you know, it's so embarrassing, but, uh, you know, that was, uh, that, that's, you learn through your mistakes. A question for you, actually, Al. Yeah, go on. Um, when was the first time that you recall... See, notice, noticing Colin the imp- impressing on the touring car program. It, 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 really, I, I, I noticed Colin in his first year of the BTCC. Um, it, it was a, 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 t- a team that I was quite interested in, Colin, because um, it was Team Atomic Kitten. Um, I was going to ask him about that later. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, yeah, <laughs> we can cover that now. Um, and it was it was a really cool thing. They were a huge band at the time, uh, and all of a sudden there were people coming along and showing interest in the BTCC that um, maybe wouldn't have ever heard of the championship before. And there, there was a, a spotlight on you and your teammate, which was Gareth Howell, wasn't it that year? Yeah, massively. Um, yeah, that as as Alan described, that was my first year into into the British Touring Car Championship, and um, you know, even even to get there, for, for, you know, for me. We didn't know anybody Com- coming from Northern Ireland. You don't know any of the teams. You d- you don't know. Uh, we we'd, we'd nobody really to 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 open the door. And I, as I just said, my brother was racing in the Formula Ford with Van Diemen and and Jonathan Lewis. And can I just ask very quickly uh, if if your plan had been to 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 become part of the BTCC was. Was your brother's plan to 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 go all the way in single seaters? Was 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 For that sure. on his mind? Yeah, oh, most yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think that was. Um for sure on on his radar uh, you know he was looking at the the career path to, to to formula one and i think at that stage my dad was you know he, he was going to try to to do everything wow. he could to help him on that journey but i think very quickly you understand your level within the sport and you understand that there is 20 guys on that f1 grid and you know, he'd been Formula Vauxhall Junior, Formula Ford, Formula Renault, and each step up is a, is an even greater financial um, commitment than than the one before. So, I think you get your eyes open very quickly, yeah. and you think, okay, you know, maybe we, uh, maybe this is not that this is not the best way to invest <laughs> yeah, money. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, but but it was through Gary actually that, uh, or through through my brother's team that that I got an introduction to to. To, to Dick Bennett's, uh, you know the, the the team principal of of West Surrey Racing, and when I look back now, I'm so fortunate that he was the first guy that I met, the first guy that that we that we spoke to. You know, I I really landed on, on my feet, and since that day, West Surrey Racing has been the the home for me. Your and, family, and it's, it's yeah, yeah, it's it's been much more than a race team. It's been been my family and the perfect environment to you know for me to perform uh, at my best. Um, I, I'm going to ask a question of Simon now because oh, um, b- 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 because Simon has been involved in motor racing for many many years, longer than I've been involved in it, Colin. I know that's hard to hard to believe, but um, when did you first come into contact with Dick Bennett, the boss of WSR West Surrey Racing? That would have been 1982. When, when he was, was Kiki Mansella in Formula Three, so uh, uh, through the Senna, yeah, yeah, yeah. You through know, the Senna era of. I mean, back then I would I'd be covering Formula Three races seven or eight times a year for for Motoring News. It would have been then, yeah. So I first met him in eighty two at Cadwell Park, actually. He's an, he's an incredible character, isn't he? Absolutely, yeah. We I mean we did a feature in motorsport with him recently, a, a lunch, a sort of four or five thousand word piece, and uh, we just I mean lunch could have gone on for 
I mean, I think it went on for three and a half hours. Yeah. Um, it could have it could have gone on for thirteen and a half. I've had flights it, sitting it, next it, to Dick it, that could have lasted just a lot. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's, I mean, he's an amazing guy. He is, such yeah. a background, um, and he's run so many fantastic drivers over time. But he's, I mean, he's really, as you say, West Surrey Racing's become your kind of spiritual home in touring cars. But you haven't always. I mean, you you've nipped away for a season with Vauxhall, a couple of years with BMR, but or. And there was a time when you weren't racing in the BTCC because of sponsorship concerns. But you always end up back there, don't you? Yeah, it's. I think you gravitate towards your family, and and that's that's the team that I felt most com- comfortable in, and and that's where I d- delivered my my best results. And you know, Dick Bennett says I think they have thirteen Formula One drivers through through their team. So I remember going to 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 West Surrey racing for for the first time with with my mum and dad and. Just uh, you know, getting a look around the premises and in, in this boardroom, he has this amazing collection of of, of helmets. There's, there's a, an unwritten rule with with Dick: if you ever win a race, you have to give him that <laughs> that, that that helmet. So he's uh, he's got helmets from from Ayrton Senna, uh, Jonathan Palmer, Rubens Barrichello, Eddie Irvine. He's one of mine up there. So <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I'm keeping very good company. But um, yeah, it's. I think the the thing that sets Dick Bennett's apart is is the attention to detail. You know, he is as methodical and enthused about motorsport now as he probably was back in 1982 whenever he met you. You know, he's so passionate about the team, about winning, about delivering for, for, for BMW. And um, yeah, he's, he, he's just a one-off. And, you know, we are... We always talk about the debriefs we have on on a Saturday night. Whether Legendary. Qual- w- whether qualifying has went good or bad, you you know you're in there for at least an hour. But some of the stories that I have heard over the years, you know, about the the Formula Three days, the days with with Ayrton Senna, uh, the the days with 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 Mickey Hacken, and some of the some of the insights that that, that I have got have been fantastic. And if you walked into to to Dick Bennett's office today, he will still have. The, the report files, you know, sh- set up sheets from 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 Ayrton Senna, from Mika Hakkinen. They they are they are in his filing cabinet. I, I, well, I know because when uh, we were doing a piece recently with one of uh, Dick's old uh, Rolt RT threes, and I phoned him up and said, "We've got this car. It was one that Mansell had raced in '82 that uh, Ayrton had made his F3 debut in at the end of that year at Thruxton." And I phoned him up. So just out of curiosity, I don't suppose you still have the setup sheet because I know you've got. Yeah, I said. I said. Uh, you're, oh you're, yes. Yeah. Well, I said to him. I said, you, 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 you famously hoard everything, ever. I said you wouldn't happen to have the setup sheet from that Thruxton meeting. And he said, hang on a second. And, uh, and he and he was back on the phone within thirty seconds. Saying, yeah, it was, uh, it was fifteen degrees, and and, and wow. he got the lap times, and, and he knew exactly where yeah. it was. Just, uh, In fact, <laughs> I'm surprised he. he, he he couldn't tell you the setup without even needing to get the sheet. <laughs> He's the sort of guy he would he could just, you know, spit that straight out. But I mean, he had the Hewland gearbox serial number and the engine serial number and you know, the tire. Is it fantastic? Incredible. Um, but just reverting slightly, how the flipping heck did you end up with Atomic Kitten as a sponsor? <laughs> I mean, Pete. you're saying you don't know anybody, and you, you turn up in British Touring Car Championship with one of the most famous contemporary pop groups yeah, on the a, side of your car. A yeah. shy young man from Northern yeah, Ireland and all of a sudden... You won't yeah. say boo to a goose and you end up with a Tommy Kidd <laughs> on your car. Pure fluke and good timing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very, very fortunate. Uh, yeah, Dick was running the uh, the, the Works MG team. Uh, that was 2002. So they wanted to... Uh, MG wanted to, to set up a, a junior team, a satellite team uh, for, for two young aspiring drivers. So... Um, myself and, and and Gareth Howell uh, happened to be to be the chosen ones. I had won the the, the Ford Fiesta Championship the year before, and uh, Gareth was was a front runner in in that too. So um, I'm not quite sure how the how the Atomic Kitten connection come to to, to MG, but um, for, for me it was it was a double edged sword. It it was good in that it put such a focus on these two new young guys coming into the BTCC and. Uh, you know the, the the girls actually come to to two of the races. They come to our very first race at uh, my very first race at at Alton Park. Did you hide in the back of the van then? <laughs> no, <laughs> I was uh, propped on the bonnet. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly my shyness left. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was uh, again. It was uh, it, it was an eye opener, and but it, it put, really put the spotlight uh, on, on on us and and 
part of me did feel a bit a bit uneasy with that. But the good thing is, you know, as soon as you're in the car, as soon as you put the helmet on, all those things go go to one side, and and you just want to get to the front. You've been in the BTCC with a couple of years sabbatical for sponsorship reasons. Ever since then, have you ever been tempted at any point to consider something else, GTs or anything like that? Um, my my passion has always been touring cars, and um, I've yeah I've dabbled in in little uh, the odd race here and there outside of uh, outside of touring cars. But you know I I love the the competitive environment. I love the 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 door to door. You know I love everything about um, the, the the BTCC. How competitive it is, um, and. You know that's where I've been able to be successful, and that's where I've been able to to make a career. And and yes, I think you almost can get pigeonholed as as just a touring car driver. You know that there's there's Colin Turkington. He's another one of those crazy touring car drivers. But you know that's what I've always loved doing. And you know I've been fortunate to to be in the championship now for 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 I think it's fourteen or fifteen seasons and. You know, there's been some good times, but there's been some really tough times as well. Especially after winning championships, where suddenly it becomes very difficult to to get back on the grid the the, uh, the, the following season. So, um, you know, touring cars is um, obviously requires quite a big financial commitment, and uh, you know that's one of the, the the biggest challenges we've you know we face year on year. That was that was a disappointment, like Nigel Mansell and Damon Hill not returning to the team after winning the Formula One World Championship. It was a bit it was a big disappointment when you couldn't make it back to the BTCC. This um, was twenty this was twenty he won the first t- your first title in two thousand and nine. Yes. And the then the sponsor pulled out at the end of the season and you were off the grid. Yeah, c- correct. Um you know, I was very fortunate in that the the, the RAC had had uh, backed our team from two thousand and six uh, and uh, I think they signed sorry, two thousand and five and then they they signed um, a, a three year program, so five, six, uh, seven, and um, you know that's as far as we ever thought we, we we could get with the RAC, and that was a good term for for, for a title sponsor. But they they kept renewing. You know, if we'll do one more year, we'll do one more year, and um, it you know culminated in two thousand and nine with 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 me winning the championship. And you know when I look back now, it's um, a, as a driver. You know, I was probably a little bit naive because you just expect the, the team to, to to get the sponsor. You know, the team will get the sponsor, and I'll do the drive, and I'll I'll deliver the goods. And especially when when you're in a season, when you're leading the championship, the the blinkers are on. All all you can think about is performance, uh, my own performance, and winning races. And you're not thinking about next year. You're not thinking about. Am I going to be in the grid next year? You know, do I need to bring sponsors? Has the team got sponsors in place? You're purely just looking at Brands Hatch Grand Prix and how you can win that championship. And you know, I, I don't blame myself because that was the first opportunity I had to to win the BTCC. So I was throwing everything at it. I did not want to think beyond the the last race of 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 the season. I just wanted to win that championship. And if I never did another race again in my life. I would be happy uh, because that was my dream from from when I started. Um, you know, racing was to get into BTCC and then and then to win it. But uh, yeah, I really had the rug pulled from from under me whenever I didn't make the. I mean, you, you say that it, you know, if you'd never done another race, you'd have been happy. But I bet you weren't at the start of twenty ten, were you? They, I mean, you you did you did for three seasons. I think you you did a little bit of World Touring Car Championship. You did a bit of Scandinavian Touring Car Championship. How did it feel looking, I mean, you obviously thought your rightful place should have been back at Brands, back at Thruxton, back at Alton, yeah, did, in the, against, against your, your familiar rivals. It, it was a really difficult uh, period of, of, of my life because, you know, obviously when, when you win the championship, then automatically your 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 goals shift. So, so, you, so, so I've got one in the bag, so you start thinking about next year. And then quickly, quickly, I realised that you know this is proving difficult to 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 be back on the grid, and you know I'd be in dialogue with with, with the team every week, but you know the 
when the RAC left, there was such a, such a big hole to, to, to fill, you know, and, and there wasn't many title sponsors of of that scale around. So, you know, when it got back around to the start of the season and I when I wasn't on that grid, it was, th- it was the worst possible thing <laughs> to be actually be sitting at home on a Sunday afternoon, watching everybody else out there having fun. Back it, to where you started. Exactly. Yeah. It was. So you, you um, didn't attend. You didn't actually attend the first race. I couldn't go. Yeah. No. I, I I didn't go to any races that year. You know, if if I wasn't competing, it was breaking my heart not to be on the grid. And actually, t- to see somebody else in my car with West Surrey Racing, you know, the team was was able to continue. You know, they got some small sponsors back on board, and they got they got another two drivers. So the heart was 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 ripped out of me and it's not until you're on the sidelines that you really realize how much you miss it and how much you want to be part of it and you know the the unfortunate thing is that the the longer you're out of the championship or a championship the harder it is yeah. to, to, to get back in because somebody fills your seat and um you know when, whenever somebody else gets into a good team like west Surrey racing they don't want to leave it so, you know, for, for me, you know, obviously I was looking about to see how I could get, get back racing, but it was... And Dick would have had you in the car in a heartbeat, wouldn't he, if, if he could have done the, the, the deal to have you in the car? Yeah, you know, we, we wanted to, to defend the, the, the championship yeah. together, you know, after so many years of, of working as, as a team together to, to reach that ultimate goal. You know, D- Dick had won Formula 3 championships but he'd never won a British touring car race. You know, he'd, he'd been in the championship from... 1996 I believe with with the Ford Mondeo so that was you know 11 years before before he had won the championship so it was a it was a big disappointment on on everybody's behalf but we were able then in 2010 to to put a part season together uh, with um with West Surrey Racing and uh, and eBay Motors so uh, I did six races um from mid-season on of of the World Touring Car Championship and that that was good, you know. It was it was something different. It was re- refreshing. It was in the car that that I knew it was in. Uh, it was in the E ninety three series. So uh, yeah, it was it was fun going going to race uh, with with the best of 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 the of the world championship. I suppose on the positive side, you didn't have him sticking a microphone under your nose every fortnight. So I mean, yeah, there was there was there was an upside to it. <laughs> every cloud, <laughs> every cloud. Um, what in your in your experience uh, uh, people that you've spoken to in championships around the world um what is the secret of the success in the btcc you you've kind of described that it's it's your home the one that you want to come back to bit like wsr you know you're happy in the team but what's the secret of success because it's it's a unique championship isn't it it's it's a very tricky championship to, to win you know obviously it's important to be in a front running team with with a car that gives you the capability to win races and reliability. You you need all these things, but I think the most important factor is resilience. You know, with BTCC, there's so many things will not go your way, and there are more tough days than there are good days. But you just have to keep working hard and grafting for every single point. No matter how insignificant that one point may be, you have to go out there and and work for it. And I think it's because it's the level playing field we have in in, in the BTCC. You know, there's this year there's thirty cars. We we've had thirty two cars on the grid, and we're we're all doing the same speed. We all have the same capabilities to to, to win races. So the margins are so so fine that, in my opinion or I think what I have taught myself to believe is that the guy who works harder is the guy that who, that will come out on top because we're all good drivers you know we all we're all in fast cars you know there's there's a balance of performance so you know there was two events last year where the full 30 grade of cars qualified within 1 second so so then you got to think how am I going to come out on top you know what can I do to make myself better than than these 29 other guy, 29 other guys, and when you understand that you've got people like Matt Neal, uh, triple champion, Gordon Shedden, triple champion, Jason Plato, double champion, you know these guys have been doing this for for a lifetime. You've got a new young wave 
of of drivers coming through with with no fear um they're not worried about respecting the older drivers so you know for me it was uh it was important to maybe look at some other sports and see you know how in other sports how 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 do you find a com- competitive advantage what what do you do and and then that's for me when it gets exciting you know it's more now than just about driving the car so you start to understand um your mental approach to to, to, to the sport your psychology um you know you you start talking to yourself you know you, you got to believe in your own ability and you know there's a there's always that negative voice in your head that will that will tell you i'm not as good as you i'm not i'm not as fast as you you know uh, i'm not going to beat you today but it's learning how to manage those thoughts how to override those thoughts things you know how, how can i sleep better how can i eat better how can i have more energy so you know that's that's when it becomes fun for me is whenever you start chasing the the last little bit uh you know how how do you find the margin and that's i think what what keeps me going that's what keeps me coming back to to, to BTCC because you're always trying to find the best version of yourself and and you're never done at that you know i'm so fortunate to to have won the the, the BTCC three times but I always know that there's a better version of me out there and you're every year you feel that you're getting a little bit closer a little bit closer so that's that's where the fun is it's it's the chase to find the best version of yourself with the psychological stuff do you have you had any outside assistance with that or, or is it something you you just simply prepare yourself Mo- most of it I've um I've just learned myself. Uh, I did. I did some sports studies, some sports psychology at at university, but that was, uh, you know, that was maybe one semester. It was a quick overview of of sports psychology, so nothing really that no tools in there that 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 I could use. But for me, it was just about, um, you know, actually re- reading reading the papers a lot. You know, reading the, the back pages of of the papers and and hearing how you know a lot of coaches and uh, what what they say to their players uh, you know particularly and you know I follow football quite a lot and um, you know obviously the Premier League has become massively c- competitive and um, you know you start to you know I really started to look behind the scenes and um, you know once I become aware that you know all these teams employ sports co- you know coaches uh, you know they do a lot of mental preparation and once your mind's open to this you know there's such a wealth of information you know on the net but I would I would go onto Amazon and just buy books and and read them cover to cover and then really pull pieces from those books that that I could then harness and tools and techniques that that I could use to you know bring myself to what they call the zone and keep myself in the zone you know that's that's the most important place so uh, you know I've really enjoyed the 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 challenge of that and you know you're never the finished article you know and even even now you know you you still doubt yourself you know you you still you still doubt whether you can win another championship but you know I have to override that well this is your 15th season in touring cars now you've won three titles so when are we going to see the finished Colin Turkington and how good's he going to be <laughs> he may already be finished <laughs> I may have picked uh, I, I'm not sure but uh, you've got you've got a record to equal before that yes um, you know there's I think there's eight seven or eight drivers have won the championship three times and Andy Rice is uh, you know the legend yeah. that is Andy Rice is 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 the one guy that that has won the championship four times so um you know that's 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 what i'm targeting next i i don't know if it's if i'll do it if it's if it, it's for sure it's possible and especially you know with, now with the um being with team bmw you know i have i have the one of the best cars i have the tools at my disposal to to, to do the job but you know, like I said, to, to win a championship, you need a special mix of ingredients. You know, you need the good car, the good team. You you need to be given it one hundred percent. But I think the stars also need to align. You you need the little bits of luck, and the cards need to fall your way on those particular days. So, um, you know, all I can do is keep delivering my best performance. Like I said before, hard work, and keep keep chasing the dream. Uh, you know, if I could match that record then I would want the fifth. So, uh, you know what, 
I'm fortunate that I still have this competitive instinct in me. And, um, you know, we have, you know, when I'm, when I'm out in the car, you know, I'm representing myself and my family, but also BMW and all the spot, um, sponsors and, and, and partners and, and team members, you know, it's, it's the guys on the ground. It's, it's, it's my mechanics, you know, that the car is their baby. They, they're working at that car six days a week and they're grafting, grafting their lives out. So it's, it's such a nice feeling to be able to reward them with, with race wins, with, with championship wins. So that's, that's the driving force. We've, I've absolutely loved this. We could easily talk for another hour or so, but we, we are going to have to wind things down very fairly soon. So just one thing, if I can ask you about, I mean, you mentioned earlier that you get 30-odd cars covered by a second, and it's that, that's the norm. Usually the top 20, 25 are within a second. So it's inevitable, certainly around some of Britain's more compact circuits, Brands Hatch Indy, for example, contact's going to happen. It's not because you guys are being hooligans. It's because the nature of the beast, you are all so closely matched. Some people are fairly sniffy about driving standards in the BTCC. I mentioned that to Alan Gow a few weeks ago, and the, I think he's, uh, I think he's still several feet off the ground. He's looking <laughs> back on it. Uh, but I mean, people are sniffy about it. But I, I think, certainly in the last five, ten years, you look at the the last race of last year, for example, Ash Sutton and uh, Josh Cook, who were this far apart for side by side around Brands Hatch for eighteen laps or whatever it was. The standards, inc- I mean, yeah, there are shunts because it's... Colin quite, wasn't it's watching that because he just won the championship well, yeah, in the <laughs> previous race. Well, the, 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 <laughs> no, no, that's true. But, I mean, I think the standard in recent seasons is incredibly high, it's certainly at the front. I, I, w- I would agree with you 100%. It's the, the quality of driving is um, is up there with, with, with any championship in, in, the, in the world. And I think... People underestimate uh, the BTCC. They, they underestimate how competitive it is and how difficult it is. Uh, you know, you see some very good drivers coming in, and you know, s- struggling. Uh, and you know, the driving standards. You know, yes, y- you get certain events where, you know, there's maybe more, you know, crashes and, uh, and accidents than, than, than normal. But when you consider, Brands Hatch is one point two miles long. Uh, you know, we're, we're going around there in 49 seconds. Knock Hill is 1.3 miles long. So to get 30 cars just alone on the on the track, you know, it fills fills half the track. So, you know, there's going to be, especially the, the first few laps, you know, when we're all piling into Paddock Hill Bend and, and Druids, you know, everybody's trying to get to the front and there will be that concertina effect. So there will be contact. But, you know, it's, 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 it's part of the game. It's part of the sport. And, you know, I think... You know that's what that's what the punters love. You know that's the appeal of BTCC. That's what we don't see with with Formula One. You know you don't see this door to door action. You know you don't see people nibbling at, at at each other's bumpers. And I think genuinely the the drivers re- respect each other. You know you know they really do. Uh, and maybe maybe there was a case a few years ago where driving standards that did dip. You know that they become a lot of this push to pass. You know where it wasn't, you know, drivers weren't passing each other th- through skill or or tact. You know, they maybe just run and in, run into the to the rear bumper of the car and push them past the apex. And you know, that's not a professional way to 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 go about motorsport. But you know, we're it's Alan, a different interpretation of push to pass. Yes, <laughs> yeah. e- e- exactly. Yeah. But yeah. you know, very quickly, Alan Guy clamped down on that and you know introduced. Uh, you know, a, a driving standards advisor to him, and we have this strike system now. So if you are a bad boy, you know you've only got a few chances. You know, once you get three strikes, you start the next race at at the back of the grid. So there's a big pal- penalty now uh, if if you do misbehave. So you know, I think I think the balance is is very good, and you know, there's not one person that comes to a touring car race or watches a touring car race that doesn't enjoy it. Okay. Incredibly we've, we've, entertaining. Yeah, we, we've received a few questions from uh, motorsport readers. And all elsewhere on social media so Alan we're going we're to sign off just now with we always appreciate the questions Alan if you could uh, yeah so so, was, a selection. so uh, Wes Hooker says uh, which drivers are your fiercest fiercest competitors on the BTCC grid obviously the, the biggest battle internally is is with your teammates because they can see everything you know that's that's who you're judged against you know we've uh, we've got three identical cars and you know, an open book policy in terms of of, of data, so so the other, your, my teammates can see everything I I do in in the car. But I would say, 
you know, I've been partnered with with some fantastic drivers um, through the years. You know, m- one of the very first one was was Anthony Reid, and and he really was was my mentor. He he took me under his his wing and, and taught me the good and the bad <laughs> <laughs> of, uh, of 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 BTCC. He's and a great character. Oh, isn't he? he's, he's yeah. a f- fantastic guy. And you know, then I was partnered with with Ivan Muller at. Um, at Vauxhall but I think the the guy that I had to to, to work hardest with and against was uh, was my two years with with, with Jason uh, Jason Plato and um, you know those were two two really tough years because um, we were both at at the at the top of our game and we both wanted to be top dog and uh, you know the first year in the front wheel drive Volkswagen Passat, he came out on top, and the second year, in the rear wheel drive Subaru, I, I came out on top. But you know we were pushing each other so hard, uh, it almost become maybe uh, a, a negative influence on the team uh, because both my side of the garage wanted to to beat his side of the garage so much, and um, you know we we were pushing each other to the absolute maximum. But you know for for drivers it. It was great because we got everything out of that car, and you know the the, the Subaru. It was, you know, it was an amazing project. You know, we 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 started the season with a brand new car, and I went to to the final with with an opportunity to, to win the championship, having had to withdraw from from Thruxton. Uh, so it was uh, it was an incredible year. Uh, so one more, I'll pick one more. Um, uh, just a nod to Andy Owen, who says, "Has Colin ever considered a switch to GT3 or GT4 competition with Blanc Pan or British GT?" I think we pretty much covered that one earlier on. Um, but Robin Llewellyn Leach says, "When will your boys, also known as Mini Turks, be f- w- be following? When will they be following in your footsteps and donning their helmets and gloves to take up motorsport? They're already karting, aren't they? Yeah, we're we're already at, at the kart track, and uh, it's only going one way. <laughs> 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 you know, it's um, you know, obviously it's at school, and I, I've tried to uh, to you know to, to let them experience all sports, you know, and 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 with school they've done that, but it just runs in the family, you know. When I put them in in the go kart. You just see the, the the smile on on their face, and Lewis, my my, my oldest boy, is uh, you know he's even more into it than, than I was as as a kid. You know when when we're actually going to the car track, he has the fireproofs, the suit, and the helmet on in the car bef- <laughs> on the way to the track. He just cannot wait, and the adrenaline is is going through him. You know as as we go up the motorway, so it's. You know, it's it's a great way to bond. You know, as as father and son. You and said uh, something a couple of years ago at the end of the season, which was just lovely. Um, and I think you said it at the at the end of season awards dinner. Um, so I I remember there was a in the audience there was a a palpable female ah um, because you said we're making memories for the family with with going racing. That's what we're doing. Yeah, I'm I'm very lucky. You know. I don't remember much of my father uh, competing, rallying and, uh, and racing go-karts. But my boys are at a fantastic age, you know, eight and nine years old, where they, they've been to pretty much every race that that I have done. You know, through through social media and all these things, we have an amazing catalogue of of images, of, of, of videos. You know, Lewis, my, my oldest, was, was three months when I won that first championship in uh, in two thousand and nine, so 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 he he was there, and um, you know each year we we look back and and reflect on just some amazing memories. And if I wasn't competing in mo- motorsport, you know, we wouldn't. I don't think we would spend so much quality time together at uh, at race tracks. And for them, it's it's such an education because they at their age are learning about about motorsport, the the bigger picture. You know, because obviously, you know, other kids they they just go out and race, they go out and, and and see. You know, they just go out and drive a carts. But my boys are very fortunate in that they see what I do behind the scenes. They see how I prepare for for races, all the homework that I do. They come to the simulators with me. Uh, they bash me off the tra- <laughs> they bash <laughs> me off the track most most of the times. But. Um, you know they they see the business side to 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 BTCC. You know they have to communicate with with uh, w- with adults. They have to um, 
you know, standard attention when we go into BMW hospitality and and you know that they're meeting the the hier- hierarchy of 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 BMW. So it's been a fantastic education, and uh, you know, hopefully, hopefully it continues. And we were at Donington Historic. I raced at Donington Historic last weekend in, in an E30 BMW, and it was the first time that uh, that 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 the boys had noticed that that we'd been to. You know, an endurance event where there was the, there was two names on on the windows ah. of each car, and the the switch flicked in in Lewis, my older boy's head, and he said, "Dad, you know, it's only going to be probably another seven eight years before we'll have Turkington and Turkington <laughs> wow. on the side of the car." So already the wow. seed is planted uh, <laughs> that that we'll be be driving together, and you know, I really hope that that, that happens. You know, it, Andy Jordan, my teammate, he was able to race alongside. Uh, his father Mike yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. Um, you know I think those are potentially the only guys that have done it in, in BTCC so I'm not sure another 10 years where my level is, is <laughs> going to be but uh, for certainly uh, certainly I think Lewis's sights are, are set on BTCC that's lovely yeah that's an absolutely fantastic note on which to finish and I said we could continue this for twice as long yeah. again but we'll have to get you back Colin thanks ever so much for your time Al thanks for your contribution thanks, And thank you to all of you for watching, for listening, for sending in the questions. We look forward to welcoming you back very, very soon to the next Royal Automobile Club talk show in association with Motorsport. Thank you.